Hey everyone, today I'm super lucky to be with my friend and colleague Pasha, who also happens to be an IOI medalist. But before we talk a lot about competitive programming today, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Thanks, Kevin. I'm Pasha. I'm Kevin's friend and colleague. We're meeting here in Chicago to discuss coding, competitive programming, and more. Awesome. So you're from Belarus, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure most viewers are from Belarus. So can you briefly describe the qualification process for your country? It's actually very similar to most other countries where you have certain um, stages in the competition. And four best contestants in the nation are selected to go to the international level of the IOI. For each country? Yeah, I see. it's only four per country. When it comes to competitive programming specifically, I was not taking it very seriously. And three times in a row, I was making it to the kind of regional city level. And I did very poorly on that level three years in a row. And then eventually in high school, I realized that I really want to get into the national level and get a medal in the uh, national competition because I didn't want to study for exams. Because if you took a medal at the national level, you could pass to any university with no entrance exams. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I, I really want to get this medal on the national stage. And then I started taking it very seriously. I see. Ended up getting a bronze medal at the IOI. Awesome. Uh, throughout the process of preparing, what are some of like, the common mistakes that you made that you would probably tell other competitors to avoid? Focusing on the theory is a very common mistake where... Why is that? Isn't it all theoretical? Is well, not really. True? Really? It's not theoretical at all because at the end of the day, you need to uh, write the code that works. Ah, I see and, what you mean. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, the best way to get better at writing code is writing code. Mm. So... I think I've made the same mistake before when I learned programming. Like, I would try to read a lot to understand something, but then... I realized eventually that the fastest way to obviously get better at problem solving is to solve problems. So I totally, I totally see what you mean. And you, uh, you remember better this way. Yeah, right? exactly. You wrote it down. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Uh, what are some other like common mistakes you made during your preparation process? It's also very common not to prepare for the for the mental component of the competition. You're sitting in a room. It's an open space. You can hear everything. You can hear them typing, for mm -hmm. example. That's stressful. Yeah. And annoying. And annoying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right. And the annoyance is negatively correlated to how well you're doing. Right. <laughs> in competition. Yeah. If you're not doing well, you're getting more annoyed. Fair enough. And yeah. you can spiral down. Yeah. I was sitting once. I read through the statements, didn't know how to solve anything at the nationals. Glanced at my neighbor. Yes. He had 300 points. Or some competitions, it's a whole open scoreboard mm -hmm. and everyone sees how you're doing. You, you can see how everyone else is doing. And uh, you need to emulate a competition at home. You need to set yourself a timer. You need to try to emulate the stress to be fully prepared for that too. Right. So back to what you said about the importance of problem solving. What are some things that you did when you were like solving more problems that helped you, you know, prepare better? What I did is I downloaded a timer on my phone where I increase the timer every time I solve a problem. So that's like a positive uh, feedback loop. Right, right. And it, it, you kind of gamify it, it becomes a game. But the game could be cheated if you just solve a lot of easy problems, which is also a common mistake that people make, which you can't do. You're gonna start progressing this way. Right. Yeah, you you have to solve hard problems, harder than you can solve. Mm -hmm. And you need to read editorials to learn what did you miss and then implement the solution. Even if you if you, you think you understand the solution, you have to also write it, submit it anyway to remember. So I would pull out my laptop and start solving problems while in biology class or any other class where the teacher would let me to do that. Really? Yeah. They all thought they all thought I was like playing Minecraft or something. I only have so much time. I had one and a half, two years in high school. And I had to go from almost zero to IY. Mm -hmm. So no time for anything else, optimize everything to reach the goal, invest as much time as possible into that one thing. Yeah, pretty you much. solve problems on the train too? On the train? I know tra trains in Europe are fly On the train, so. I was, so I, I, I had to take a train to school every day. On, on the train, I was dreaming. 
I was dreaming about winning these competitions. That's good. That was <laughs> that's motivating. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I think a lot of people underestimate how hard you have to work to reach this level of competition. How hard did you work if you were to like count the hours or whatever, describe it uh, in greater detail? It really depends. I did work a lot. I solved problems all the time, every day. All the free time I had, I was writing down algorithms, solving thousands of problems a lot. There are people that didn't and did much better than me. There are people that solved much less problems, were much less, and they absolutely destroyed me at every competition. How is that the case? How, well, how is that possible? If you have the capability, you can do that, right? Like there, there's the genetic unicorn. Right. Right? Of course. So it, it very much depends. But even, even if you are such a person, the harder you work, the better you do, right? So the people that are genetic universe and then they solve thousands and thousands of problems are the ones that become one of the best in the world, are the ones that become like top 10, top 20 in cold forces, get, get the golden medals. So when you were preparing, what kinds of resources helped you the most? Yeah, the thing is that to prepare for these competitions, you can absolutely do it online on yourself, on your own, okay. by yourself. Right. All the resources are available. So you have cpalgorithms.com, you have codeforces.com where you can solve all kinds of problems and you can read editorials and you can talk to people, ask them, how did you solve this? Why does this work? Why does why this doesn't? <laughs> you have also websites of just competitions that happen, like national Olympians of most countries. That's right. All the problems are online. Right. Yeah. You can read about algorithms on Wikipedia. So mm -hmm. those are those are the things I used. I see. That makes sense. How do you feel about the code? Leetcode is different. Leetcode is just for interviews, pretty much. It's interview questions. So what's the difference? I guess the main difference is just the competitive program problems are just ten times harder. Yeah. Like I've heard. Uh, I was solving 22, 23, 2400 score problems uh, in high school there, and uh, yeah, and and I was solving thousands of problems, mm -hmm. right? So it's like um, you said you had like a counter thing like yeah, how, many, how many problems yeah. did you solve but at the time of my career i had 1106 on that counter and those are like hard problems where those are only hard problems that's crazy. i didn't count these i don't think i've solved a thousand problems in my life that's takes well maybe you me. learn faster than me maybe no right. no absolutely not <laughs> that's crazy. some people don't have to solve that many problems but yeah that's fair enough this is the number i had so, so yeah if you want to if you want to if you want to prepare for competitive programming competitions mm -hmm. you probably shouldn't do it go Maybe like in the yeah. beginning a little bit, but then you should progress into some harder stuff. For sure. So what are some of the algorithms or data structures that you think are most helpful for competitive programming? Yeah, so so the way it works is that you have certain uh, basics. There's some core basic algorithms that probably every software engineer should know. Basic tree algorithms, you have your connected components, BFS, DFS, shortest paths. You have your string algorithms, you have your segment tree, you have your binary trees, you have your lists and stacks and queues. Um, That's a lot. I don't know what a segment tree is. So. <laughs> uh, I guess it's not too much day to day, but it's, it's very important, right? So you have those very kind of uh, core algorithms. Mm -hmm. And if you study those really well, I think it's going to do 80% of the job for you. And then you get like kind of the 20% stuff where you have more complicated algorithms. You have your like mincot right. suffix table, you have your light decomposition of trees, you have your aho karasic uh, automata, but then it gets a little bit less useful, useful and then mm -hmm. those algorithms become more rare and they're also less useful in real life. Right. So. So it depends, it depends on your strategy. I did learn those other things just to gain a little bit more edge, a little bit more competitive edge, right? Like what if they give me a problem on uh, heavy light decomposition? I better know that, right? But uh, you can you can definitely get even an IOI medal without that. That makes sense. Yeah. So you made IOI in 2020, right? Yeah. Which was during COVID. Yeah. I'm sure that the experience could have been much better, but I'm sure it was still awesome regardless. So tell me about what IOI was like in 2020. Yeah, so we were coding in, in like a small uh, classroom. We had an online stream where they showed online all the cool places in Singapore. Oh, 
right? Instead of being on site the the competition, right? But yeah, I, I didn't really care about anything like that because for me it was such an insane dream which seemed absolutely impossible to accomplish. In my first year of high school, I was still 10th in the country. And then at the selections, I will, I made it to the selections to the IOI. I was a candidate at the IOI in 10th grade. Um, I was completely destroyed and I got 12th place out of 12. Wow. So for me, even even with the, like a golden medal, medal in the nationals, it, was, it seemed absolutely impossible. I was thinking, there's just no chance. Mm -hmm. Um, because you have to make, make it in the top four. Right. So eventually I did make it. And eventually in the, year, in the next year, in the 11th grade, I did make it in the top four. I was the second. This time I was the second in the country. Nice. At the nationals. And then the third at the selections. It was absolutely insane. It was a whole beyond a dream come true. And I was coding the second day of the IOI on my birthday, too. I, I had to write that on my birthday. It was on my oh. 18th birthday that I could code it. Iowa. That's that's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that is like a, a dream come true for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's my 18th birthday. That's really so cool. This, yeah, nice. I did not care. I love to see it. Yeah. Um, so to wrap up, what kind of advice would you give aspiring like CS majors or software engineers? What would you tell them based on your experience? If you're a CS student in general, it's not a time to rest at all. Because it's a brutal competition, mm -hmm. and uh, the more you can do in college, the better you'll set yourself up. Right. All right. So, and the the earlier you start, the more experience you accumulate, the better it will be for you. And it's the same game as with the IOI, where the more time you put in, the better your outcome will be. The more you will get out of it. So I started doing internships, and I went to to get as much experience as I can, learn as many things as I could. So that's why that's why I did that, mm -hmm. basically. Right? Weren't, you, weren't you able to chill because you had already become an Iowa medalist? Or? Chilling is boring. Chilling is boring. This is much more fun, right? <laughs> I see. This is this stuff is much more fun. What can be more fun than working towards achieving a dream? Nice. So, yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's redo that. Oh, that's good. That's no, good. Let's, let's do another one. Let's go.